Okay, so now today's topic will be DNA activation and ascension. That's what we'll be going on today. So now I'll just go through what you'll be learning in this. Why you must activate all 12 DNA strands and how it corresponds to where our planet is heading. A little history of DNA, what it really is, and why we have 97% junk DNA or dormant DNA. What file letters are and why they're really important. How we fell from who we really were. Clearing the different blockages to help you activate your DNA and in particular how negative life experiences around money and personal issues can hinder you activating your DNA and how to clear these blockages for full activation. So things like negative money experiences, investment blockages, these kind of things uh, will will heavily prevent you from experiencing the full DNA as an ascension activation. So now just a little about me for those who for those new faces out there and my story. So I went to school until eighth grade. I was homeschooled from ninth to the eleventh. And then I did busking in Fremantle markets using card magic. I've never needed to get a job. I did Cert 3 in Business Admin in my final year of schooling. I've been on Today Tonight TV in 2017 for the, for the busking. And I now help people shift their problems and improve their lives. And I do that by teaching the spiritual and esoteric as well as um, healing sessions and healing meetings. Where I basically clear all the blockages and the imprints from the etheric or from the auric field right before it reaches into the physical in the physical realm. Okay, so now DNA activation. What is it exactly? Now DNA activation is the process of accreting light into your morphogenetic or your auric field. This is so you can embody your higher self in the 3D and unveil your true essence, which is divine love. And activating your DNA is a must if you desire to ascend back to source or to God. So you can't ascend back unless your DNA is fully activated. And every 26,500 years, there's an ascension cycle occurs. And we had a recent one, which was triggered in December, 2017. And this is why we must activate our DNA. Otherwise we can actually miss out on experiencing ascension with planet Earth. So you can miss out and go down with the ship, so to speak, because we've seen what's gone on with the world, like with, with all those vaccine mandates and we've seen it with the riots and all, and the masks and all of these, all the things and the chaos that are going on in the world today and the financial system collapsing, all of it unraveling. So it's like we're entering a new super earth or like a golden age. <clears throat> so what do I mean by ascension? Because this term is thrown out a lot, especially in spiritual, the spiritual kind of work. Now, <clears throat> now if you've been on this kind of walk, you've heard this term a lot. <clears throat> but what does it actually mean to ascend? Ascension is about transfiguring our physical body into a higher, lighter, less dense, more energetic body to return to source. That is to connect with our higher spiritual life, leave this dense body form, and go back to our original source template. So in other words, it's about transfiguring our physical body we're in now into something less physical and more energy more light and leaving this and leaving this lower dense earth and in the keys of enoch by jj hertak and in the over self awakening by the same author author he talks he talks about the adam cadmon original dna template and the further enoch and seth templates which are capable of creating high frequency so he actually talks about our original DNA template, which was of that Adam Cadmon, and which was of a very high frequency. But unfortunately, rather than evolve, which we, which we are built to do, we have involved, which we are not built to do. 
So you can, so for this, you can look at Dead Men's Secrets and Paradise Planet by John Gray and see Involution Dimensional Template. So we, we have what's called here, like a subtle body anatomy or like auric field or different layers. There's many ways that you can put this. So you've got your physical body here and you've got your seven chakras down like this. Then you've got the eight morphogenetic chakras down here, which are in your auric field. And as you can see, we have many, many different layers. If, if, if it was physical, in, instead of just in the higher realm, these would expand out for miles and miles. Or, so then you've got dimension one, two, and three. So these chakras actually correlate with the different dimensions. And it's a very mathematical and exact process. There's nothing chaotic about it. It's very much very orderly, very and very and very much built like this. So then you've also got the different colors, and each of these colors represent that specific frequency. So even by imagining these colors, you can actually heal yourself through that and use it for other purposes. So what do I mean by ascension? We'll dig into that further. Although death is one way to leave this physical body, the problem is, as the Indian yogis are well aware, when we die physically, if we haven't resolved our karma or completed our mission, we come back. So we've been reincarnating for thousands and thousands of years, repeating the same patterns and cycles over and over again, because we never learn. So another way to look at ascension is that we're cleansing our karma and finishing our life mission so we can start to evolve and transform our physical body into a light body and return to source to where, back to where we came from. <clears throat> so then we won't have to come back here. And it's not hard to see that death, sickness and struggle is not a natural way of being. So, die, so biological death and being sick, having all these diseases, striving and going through all the and all those horrible struggles, it's not a natural way of being. So now we're turning back to source. Now, what do we mean by that? It's complicated, but I'll do my best to explain this simply. Thousands of years, even millions ago, we were part of a race of gods connected to higher realms of consciousness. <clears throat> and all esoteric literature talks about a fall from the higher dimensions. Many writings talk about a time when fallen lords or darker beings formed a rebellion against the higher galactic order, which resulted in everyone being cast down into these lower realms until they ended up in this very low, dense earth consciousness. And the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of Enoch, and the Keys of Enoch all talk about this fall. And it's even mentioned in Genesis 11, verses 1 to 9. And The Secret History of the World by Jonathan Black, a mystery school publication, talks about the age of Saturn, or Satan, when everything moved into dense matter and darkness, and it was completely covered with it. Genesis 1 talks about the earth being without form or void. So, I mean, as you can imagine here, like the Bible is actually a metaphor for a lot of things. Now, when you read it from a logical and linear point of view, it looks like a silly book. But when you read it from the heart, from the spiritual and the third eye, it all makes perfect sense and it all comes together. And there are, there are many teachers who speak about this. And David Icke, I'm sure you've heard, uh, many of you have heard of him talks about darker lords and reptilians running of this planet who know about our DNA template, our weaknesses, and they send all kinds of negative implants and blocks into our system to keep us trapped and maintain control of the planet for their own ends, for their own selfish end. And David Wilcock talks about a race of people called the elongated skulls constantly turning up in history. And they were involved in the pyramids, Stonehenge, sacred geometry. They have really high IQs and all kinds of stuff. So they're always, they're always turning up, according to him. And Jonathan Gray in Paradise Planet and Dead Men's Secrets talks about evidence showing the truth of ancient civilizations 
so advanced in technology that still to this day, nobody can replicate it. So in other words, uh, and I, I mean, we all kind of have the, these computers, these phones, these microphones, and we have uh, artificial intelligence and all these different technologies. So it seems like we're the most technologically advanced, but when you actually dig deep into this, you'll find that it wasn't the case and that the ancient civilizations had technology that were far more advanced than ours, and it would make ours just look like nothing and that nothing has been able to replicate it. That, I mean, it's been tried, but it's been tried, but I mean, it's, it, it's just never happened. And near, nearly all mystery schools and Freemasons, etc., talk about this. So a lot, so quite even the dark know a lot about this, which is why they've worked so hard and they're still working so hard to keep the truth under wraps. And then you have like the hamster wheel. And that is the planet has gone backwards, not forwards. And now we're only now starting to catch up. It's like we're stuck in a hamster wheel, which never ends. Thousands of years we've been reincarnating again and again due to the unresolved karma we have. And the way this whole thing works is if you don't clear enough karma or fulfill your life mission, <clears throat> you'll just reincarnate over and over and over. So that's the way it works. And well, this is exactly why we must return back to source and why we need to. So we don't reincarnate again and again. And we'll get to be in the higher realms and go back to the source and higher consciousness instead, where we, where we truly are meant to be. Abundance, health and happiness are a normal way of being. Suffering is not normal. So there's, the, so there's the scientific and there's the spiritual perspective on DNA activation. DNA activation goes all the way back to Bible and ancient time. And like I said, we have involved, not evolved. You'll see it in the Bible where great prophets got their DNA activated and turned into a light body. So these are some examples here. Ezekiel did in chapter one, Isaiah in chapter six, Elijah 2 Kings 2 and Enoch Genesis 5. Venus Jesus got his in the wilderness in Matthew 4. And in Genesis chapters 1 to 5, we see people living as old as 969 in the case of Methuselah. So clearly they were in a, di in a different, more evolved world, a different template, and the DNA was activated to communicate with the gods. Because in these times, people were living hundreds of years old without even trying, and it was it was it was normal for them. Whereas these days, it's a huge accomplishment for someone to reach a hundred. So that that itself shows how much we have involved, not evil. And Professor J. J. Hertak in the Keys of Enoch talks about his own experience where his Merkaba was activated, so he got it himself. Then you've got the DNA strands. So to activate your DNA, you need to awaken your dormant strands of junk DNA. So it is a scientific fact that we only use 3% of our DNA. So type a Y in the text chat if you've heard of junk DNA. Christine has, Aiden, Manu has, Sue, Sharon. Holly, Robin, Sam, Barbara. Okay, quite a lot of you. Faye, no. Kim, no. S Simone, never. Nadine, yep. <clears throat> okay, so a lot of you have, and a few of you haven't. So then, so that is 97% of DNA is sitting there doing nothing. So that's what junk DNA is. That three percent that we only use three percent and ninety seven percent is not doing it is sitting there just doing nothing. Now I'm sure that doesn't that, that it does not add up because either that is the way it's meant to be, which somehow I don't think so, or else there's a reason they're dormant and switched off and they're no longer working. A fall or involving from higher realms at some time is the only way to explain this. Scientists are now exploring this. 
In actual fact, we're meant to have 12 strands of DNA which are fully activated because it gives us access to the 12 dimensions of consciousness. That's the way that it's meant to be. Okay, wow, so can you explain this further? So, the way you can imagine it is this. So, just imagine a clock with 12 hands. And each hand or strand represents a dimension of your consciousness. You can turn on 12 dimensions of consciousness, which would be an avatar. Yet most people on the planet have a DNA activation level of only three, only the first three. Some people born as indigos or higher consciousness people, the highly spiritual families, can have four strands switched on. So, so the ones who were born as indigos, they'll have more than three switched on, but they they also don't have that potential. They also are not don't have all those activated. However, these are rare because there are there are not a lot of indigos in the world compared to how many other how many are populating the planet. So the reality is, most people on the planet today only access the first three dimensions and live in a 3D way of thinking. So the physical, emotional, and mental bodies. So these, so these are the only dimensions people are accessing and they're living in. So physical, emotional, mental, and survival, power, sexual, and fear, all kinds of, and all the things that represent around those first three chakras. And they cannot access their fourth dimensional self, which is the beginning of their soul identity and cannot even activate their heart chakra, the fourth chakra that allows them to experience and cultivate unconditional love. So most people can't even access and activate their own heart. So if you only have three strands of DNA active, you will stay stuck in this low density reality. As everything is about the frequency of which you vibrate and oscillate, a three strand being only oscillates at 150 gigahertz, so not a lot. From what scientists and spiritual experts on DNA and ascension are saying, this is the last window of opportunity we on the planet have got to ascend to the fourth dimension and be part of the new earth. So with this last window, I mean, a lot of people are going to miss out on this. So we now have an opportunity to grab this. Uh, so then this is the 12 strand DNA image that you can just look at for a second. So like the clock with 12 hands. So DNA strands are our blueprint of life and a, and a huge key for our ascension. Between each DNA strand, we have 12 fire letters, which total up to 144. That is what our DNA is made of. And originally, when our DNA activated, our fire letters would as well, which then manifests as our chromosome, chromosomes. So far, what a fire letter is, is an ancient term that was used in the Hebrew and the Enochian teachings. And they taught fire letters as a way to turn your body into light. And what a fire letter actually is, is a standing wave that flashes on and off, kind of like a candle or Christmas tree light. So these fire letters are a huge key to turning your body into light and ascending. Everything at the quantum level is made up of fire letters. And this is what our DNA is made of, because fire letters is a consciousness. Fire letters were originally our one language to use as a collective, actually. But then everything went wrong. And Genesis 11 verse 1 to 9 talks about this event. Because, I mean, these days we have all the million different scrambled languages all across the world. But before everything went wrong and went, and went south, we, only, we had one language as a collective. There was that one language. Fire letters are also meant to be activated and used for manifestation. So fire letters are actually a huge key for in helping you to manifest what you want. So how do DNA and fire letters work together? Think of it this way. DNA strands are like rooms in your house. So imagine that you've got 12 rooms. 
Fire letters are like the lights in your room. So you have 12 light switches in each room, totaling 144. So there are 12 rooms in the building and 12 lights in each room. To fully activate a DNA strand or room, you must turn on all the lights. Furthermore, if the room or hallway is full of junk, you have to clean out the junk first before you can get to all the light switches. And at this time for the majority of the planet, only three rooms in the, in the house have all the lights on. The fourth room may have a few of them, but the rest of them are completely dark and they're not yet switched on. So that's how, that's what's operating in our DNA currently. So 12 strand DNA. So to summarize this more simply, there's a big building with 12 rooms and only three of them have the lights on, all the lights on. Fourth one, maybe a few. And you would wonder why. And you realize it's because there's only the switches for those specific rooms are switched on. That's exactly what it's like for our DNA. We haven't flipped that switch yet. We haven't cracked that code. So just like the lights inside your house, the lights will only turn on if you flip that switch. Until you use the switch to turn on the lights, you can scream, curse, and you can shout, and you can, you can make a fuss, but it won't change anything. That's the purpose of a DNA activation. And the good news is you can activate your DNA by clearing yourself of imprints and reprogramming yourself to align with your divine frequency and blueprint. And by clearing all your blockages and activating your DNA, your path to ascension, being aligned with your purpose and attracting and creating wealth becomes much easier. Now, there's now the problem this causes is that the fact we only have three of our DNA strands turned on is a huge reason why we are not able to access the higher realms of consciousness or the higher masters. The DNA is switched off. And to complicate things further, there seems to be a tampering with the DNA by insertion of seals or implants. For example, the Zeta seal blocks the fourth DNA strand from plugging into the fifth DNA strand. And because of that, we die early and reincarnate over and over due to not activating our DNA and having failed to ascend our consciousness beyond the tipping point. And Pista Sophia commentary by Professor J.J. Hertak. So now let's talk more about junk DNA. As explained previously, scientists have found 97% of your DNA isn't doing anything. And they simply just say it's junk DNA. But who would believe that that's how God created us and that he would do this? It's like having a car that has 97% of its parts not working. So if you have 97% of your DNA not working, is that going to cause problems? Oh, you bet it does. This raises the question, what kind of problems happen from dormant DNA? To take one example, scientists have discovered that average human only uses 10% of their brain. Is there a possible correlation? Well, absolutely. So if you're not using your full brain power, can you imagine the kind of things you can do with full brain power? Just imagine the possibilities. Um, even movies like Limitless and Lucy have touched have, have touched on on this topic. So, so, so like I mentioned there, the, this is explored in the Hollywood movies in these ones. And these show the possibilities and scientists even say that it's very close to the truth. That it, that it may not be the full truth, but it's very close. And people who start activating their higher brain capacity can do things like speed reading, powerful healings, instant manifestations, and instant miracles. So these examples are Jesus and Elijah. So, so, I mean, we've all heard of the miracles and the manifestations, the healings that Jesus was able to do. And he even said that we will, we will do what he did and go and we'll go, be, we'll even go beyond him. And he said that himself. This has been proven. So in books such as Ken Wilber, The Religion of Tomorrow, or Claire Graves, who are all masters in human consciousness potential, 
they discuss the different realms of consciousness where you can become what's called super conscious. Well, this means that you can not only tap into your own mind, but also the mind of your soul and others around you, as well as the whole planet. <clears throat> and you can rel you can actually read a collective energy pool. You can speed read. For example, there was a girl called Eugenie who, at age 15, could read a, a one page per second with 100% comprehension. This was tested and proven. So in other words, she could read a full page of a book in one second with 100% comprehension of all of it. And only a, a minority on the planet today, for example, can speed read. Yet naturally, we actually think in pictures and not words. So somehow we've lost touch with our full potential and capabilities. So could it be that you're not using your full brain power because your DNA is not working properly? Yes. Activating your DNA increases your brain power, increases your ability to tap into the superconscious and to speed read books. You can even get to a level where you can tune into books. You can put them on your stomach and absorb all the information. In short, you don't even have to read it all to get all the knowledge. So, so Warren has actually done a speed read course, which was run by Ed Stratcher. And they've proven in Atlantean technology, you can do things like this. And there was a belief in Atlantis and Lemuria that you are able to do speed reading. Psychic energy even talks about people who have experienced visitations from beings from other dimensions who are saying this to them. So they were giving those messages. So what, so what can happen with DNA activations? In summary, it can do things such as increase your brain power, increase your ability to tap into higher realms, get downloads for financial matters and more easily connect with a higher mind to increase your income and net worth, <coughs> improve your health. So for example, what, so for example, when Warren himself got a DNA activation, he could tap into healing himself and healed himself from food poisoning in only two minutes. And when I got my own DNA activation, I could instantly tap into the higher dimensions and I could see blockages on people and clear them off, which I never could before. So in other words, by getting DNA activations, you'll find that it will unlock talents and abilities you didn't even know were existent. Increase healing and psychic powers more easily step into your life mission, clear blocks, fears, subconscious sabotage patterns, which resolve itself without you doing anything. The truth is, would Source ever intend us to be dropped on this planet, get sick, get into a job, have financial struggle, struggles, and then die? Because I mean, either he's a complete psychopath or, or else we, there's something that we're missing. And obvious, and we can all see that it's clearly the latter. So we were born to be healthy. We were born to be rich. We were born to be abundant. But we've fallen from our original state, plain and simple, and it's now time to come back. Now let's dig deeper. Every 26,500 years, an ascension cycle occurs like we mentioned before. And basically right now we are we're kind of in one and you can miss out, like we said. You can miss out on the ascension cycle and going and actually ascending back to, to God. The Keys of Enoch has talked about this. There's a lot of radical shifts going on in the planet where there's actually evidence. And if you search on Google about magnetic pole shift, and there's actually evidence that it's already shifted to Siberia and there were 48 earthquakes in 72 hours just in the recent years. So there's no doubt we're heading towards it. People have been feeling the change. There's more disasters happening on Earth than ever before. So, and it's, it's just getting worse and worse as we've been seeing. The reality is the economic system is crashing. So if you don't have your DNA activated, um, changed, you will not cope with the coming changes that are coming. Um, there's 12, there's, tw there's actually 20, there's $200 tw trillion of world debt it's, and the financial system is crashing and collapsing. So you'll miss out on ascension to source and there's a real chance you won't cope with the changes and the inevitable economic crash. 
And even if you've got money and find a way through the crash, I mean, who would want to be miserable? Uh, and who would, want, who would want to be rich, but have no purpose and be miserable? That's the reality you face if you're not living your soul mission and have a pure connection to source. So it's pretty, so it's getting really serious now. In the past, we've been able to get away with a lot, but these days, but now with the times we're in, we, we can't get away with anything now. The good news, however, is activating your DNA will connect you to source. You'll know your purpose. You'll know why you're here. Things will start to come together. At the same time, as you're activating yourself, you're going through a cleanse. You're undergoing through an energetic and even physical transformation in your body and mind and soul. So think of it like a body. It's great to go to the gym, great to do exercise, great to activate your capability. But what if you're doing that with an intoxified body? Well, that's why going to gym, but then detoxing, healthy eating, healthy living, healthy lifestyle is critical. I mean, just because you go to the gym, it's not going to be an automatic problem solver for getting that body that you desire or whatever goals that you're trying to achieve. There's a lot more that comes with that. You have to have the, you have to have the diet, the detoxing, the lifestyle, all of it. So that's what it's like with this mass, this DNA activation. You need, you need a healthy spirit to help with the energetic and etheric body. The master cleanse is a detox. So there is actually a master cleanse and I've done, I've even run a course on this. This is an auric clearing, karma, J seal, other seals, implants, and above all that curses, hexes, spells, even stuff we've never done before, like an enhanced karma clearing enhanced auric clearing and enhanced energetic parasitic where we actually get into deeper layers actually getting into what are called hosts so hosts that actually settle themselves in your in your spine and kundalini so you get a full spiritual cleanse you get the full um effect you get the full effects of it so it's just like one it's it's every clearing at once so now let's look at science behind it all so the epigenetics, so the science of epigenetics explores how you, how you can activate DNA. Take Dr. Snyder, for example, and what he discovered. Epigenetics, all my mother's or father's fault, in other words. So the old school thought is that our genes control everything. The role, the rule of fixed genes. So, um, or in other words, the genes we're born with is the genes we're born with and nothing can be changed. If that's the old school thought. It's a new biological science, however, which is focused on the epigenome. And epi means above or over. Epigenome is the mechanism of gene expression that lies above the genome itself. But really, epigenetics is the study of environmentally induced chemical genes to gene expression. So we're changing how the gene expresses itself without necessarily changing the gene. In other words, we're not completely changing it, like removing our gene, um, the gene we have and putting in a whole new one. We're basically, we're basically changing how the gene expresses itself and how it, and how it manifests into our reality. The epigenome is passed down several generations along with the genes themselves. So even in the scriptures, it says the sins of the fathers carry to the 10th generation. So the, sin, the sins of our, of our fathers, our mothers, and our ancestral line, it all spills down to us. So until that cycle is broken, it will continue in the family line. And epigenetics is turning out to be a game changer for the science world in the understanding of learning behavior and memory. Because it shows you can activate DNA or even increase your strands and spiritual capabilities by your intention and doing work around your DNA. So see, see Dr. Snyder and Professor JJ Hertek. So, so there's, there's, there's the thing what's called a three day particle conversion process. So this may be, this may be heavy, but just bear with me. This is how ascension occurs. And in fact, how the earth is entering into the ascension phase. Earth is chemically changing and we are changing along with it because we are connected with Mother Earth. 
what happens to Mother Earth happens to us. Scientists are already speaking about a magnetic pole shift which is happening now. This is the first sign of ascension. If our frequency doesn't align with the changes, we will miss out. It's exactly like having a radio station on the wrong channel. The point is, if you don't have your physics, your chemistry, your biochemistry, and your DNA align with what's happening on the planet and converting, you will miss out on the ascension if you don't change with the times. So kind, of like kind of like a restaurant, the restaurant becomes obsolete if they don't stick with the new trends and all. So, Keys of Enoch says that the planet will change metaphysically. People will ascend to a new, higher dimensional Earth. You will be left in the old dimensional earth and you'll have to reincarnate all over again if you don't change. Some even believe there'll be cataclysms, meteors, bombs, and the earth will effectively go back to a primitive state for those, uh, for those who, are um, who choose to ascend out of the 3D state, who fail to ascend out of the, the, free, the 3D state. Now, I know it may sound crazy and it may sound and it sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie. <coughs> but there's many but there's many who are saying this and it cannot be ignored. Now let's explore this a little further. And the people who are labeled as conspiracy theorists, tinfoil hats, and who are laughed at, as you can see, they're now it's they're all they're all turning out to be right with everything that's happening. And, and I mean, even in the scripture, when Noah built an ark, I mean, he was mocked and laughed at until it rained. So there's the first wave of transmutation, the first day, which is the Arcturian activation. So the Ark from Ark, so the Arcturians are beings. Because it has to do with the seventh dimensional Arcturian universal stargate and its frequencies aligning here. Now, during the first wave of the ascension, the ninth, the eighth, and the seventh sub-frequency bands of the Earth's density one magnetic Merkaba field, it turns electrical. So the seventh, eighth, and ninth frequency bands, or like the DNA strands of Earth, well, the Merkaba will, will become electric. And then you have the negative charged electrons, which reverse polarity to become positive charged protons. So they're changing from electrons to protons and merge with the density to electrical antiparticle solar Merkaba, parallel ta um, Terra, the inner Earth and the parallel Earth. So on the first wave of transmutation, the, the magnetosphere, the radiation belts of the lonosphere and the exosphere from Earth's surface are transmuted into a transharmonic photon field of cold burning hydrogen based superluminal subparticles. <clears throat> so all of that is is transform transmuted and transforming <clears throat> into a transharmonic photon field of the cold burning hydrogen based superluminal subparticles. Next one is bi biology density two light density um, density three sound DNA celestine and atomic transmutation. So basically, human DNA and that of other Earth life forms has the capacity to hold dimensional sound waves and are designed to survive the three-day particle conversion period of the stellar activation cycle. That is, if the DNA is activated and functioning properly. So we are built to survive this, but we need the DNA activating and functioning properly. So you need to be able to maintain at least a four-point uh, part five DNA strand activation for this. You need at least that. <clears throat> so that's the first day, and then the second day, the second or the, the second day, or the other word is the wave. The second wave of transmutation, day one and a half to day two and a half, is the Orion activation. So the activation from another planet, <clears throat> and during the second wave of this, this third day particle conversion period. The solar wave infusion of the Orion activation brings the third density and the, the eighth dimension gold light spectrum and dimensional nine silver light spectrum into Earth's atmosphere. So the colors from the eighth and ninth dimensions, <coughs> the frequencies of those colors are being brought here. 
and the negative charged electrons reverse polarity to become positive charged protons because this, they will proceed with the fusion with the inner earth, <coughs> the parallel earth, and density two solar and Terran shield and Merkaba fields. And during this second wave, the Orion activation, Earth's outer atmosphere begins entering to the second of three stages of the sixth dimensional Hala phase Merkaba vehicle as the middle atmosphere enters the first stage of the Hala Merkaba. So in other words, it's like a higher Merkaba. We're entering the first stage of that higher Merkaba during the second wave. And then the third wave of transmutation, day 2.5 to 3, it's the Andromeda activation in an atmosphere cross to core conversion. So Andromeda, another planet. So that's so that's the, the that's another high planet. So where it's um the Andromeda activation is the inner and because inner atmosphere crust to basically core conversion. Trans, it's transforming from that to that. The third wave begins by the middle of day two. Initiation of the Andromeda activation as density three, the dimensional nine base tone silver light and density four the dimensional 10 overtone blue black sapphire light move into earth's atmosphere and shields as andromeda activation begins so as the activation from andromeda begins what that what that is saying is that there's an initiation that happens so the and that the way that will work is that the third density of earth and that the the ninth dimensional base tone silver light so the the color and the fourth density of dimensional 10, the overtone blue-black, the, that the color of the 10th dimension of the sapphire light, that moves into Earth's atmosphere and moving here. So, so it's basically paving the way for the Andromeda activation to begin. If the indigos can wake up enough to do their job, all of this with the Earth will be going on like a tyrant around us. But our, but our planet can literally be in like a bubble of frequency that protects it. And by the time that everything stabilizes, you can blend this hologram into the inner Earth hologram, and we will have a relatively stable experience going through it. The bottom line is the planet is in for a fucking ride. So it's not just one. It's not just one roller coaster. We're in for two roller coasters, as we as we have been since 2020 in particular. It's like getting an upgrade. So it's like upgrading your iPhone 6 to like an iPhone 10 and stuff like that. So that's how you can see it. And yeah, there's some reactions here. Wow, holy moly. Yeah, it's definitely a lot to take in. And it, it may not make sense at first, but once you once you read it from like a higher perspective and study into it, it really does. And Miko says, I feel that's why I'm here to help through this transition. Exactly. As when you're an indigo, you're that's what you that's what you're here for, to help with this transition, to assist Earth in act in raising the frequency and being part of the ascension. So the DNA activation is part of the mission of the indigos. If you're here and you resonate with what I'm saying, chances are you're an indigo or else you're called to work with the indigos. Because the only people who resonate with this work are indigos. If you're not, then you will not resonate with this work. So there are three types of indigos, the three main ones. You've got type one, which are blueprinters, <coughs> type two, which are activators. And then you've got the angelic humans who are the supporters. So the type one and two, they're the ones doing all that work. And the angelic humans are, so that's, that's majority of the people on the planet. They're just here to help be like a support for, uh, they're the ones that we have to lead on. And indigos are here to assist humanity with the ascension process. So let's explore further what the indigos do. As the indigos build the fifth and higher DNA strands, they pull higher dimensional frequency into the Earth's grid. So they have that capability of pulling the higher dimensional frequency into this Earth. Because this Earth is already a very low and dense place. 
So then by bringing that here, it changes a lot. As the higher dimensional frequency is at its maximum peak within the Earth's grid, the race morphogenetic field opens into Earth's morphogenetic field. So in other words, the indigo's auric field opens into Earth's auric field. And the Earth's grid begins to transmit fifth dimensional frequency directly into the bioenergetic fields to everyone on Earth. So the, the Earth's grid, in other words, can transmit that higher frequency into every, to everyone here. Everyone can receive it. The result of this infusion with the fifth dimensional frequency sets the energetic imprint for the fifth DNA strand within all the races. This also includes those whose personal organic morphogenetic imprint didn't originally contain the fifth DNA strand and would otherwise miss out. So this is the beauty of it all. I mean, that's because it not only will help uh, as the indigos and the higher children of God, but it, it will also help those who would otherwise miss out. It also gives those a chance to actually ascend as well, the ones who weren't originally part of it. So it's being, so you can see it's very inclusive. So if you're an indigo, you'll feel called to do this. If you're not, you will think I'm talking nonsense and it won't make any sense to you. So now let's recap before we get into the activation. So let's recap what happens if you don't activate the DNA. Any of the following can happen. You'll miss out on being part of the ascension on planet Earth. Your third eye becomes blocked. Your ability to attract and create wealth is much more difficult. It's harder to feel content and align with your path, purpose, and mission for this planet. Attracting quality relationships is more difficult. You're more likely to attract bad health and physical illnesses or diseases. So now activating your DNA. Before you do any kind of DNA activation, you will get you will still receive a great your great experience, but you'll get an even greater benefit if you've already done a J seal removal, a karmic and auric clearing beforehand. If you've already undergone all the different clearings, the way you activate your DNA is by using specific high frequency codes and commands, as well as activating three DNA strands at a time. So to activate our DNA strands, we use a specific manual to say certain commands and use codes to activate them. And we activate three strands at a time. Okay, so now let's get into this DNA activation. So now everyone focus on this code. And inhale, inhale this code into your DNA, into your aura. Just imagine it there, close your eyes, take some deep breaths, <clears throat> take some deep breaths, allowing yourself to relax, to, to relax your mind.
It is commanded by the laws. It is commanded by the laws of the. Of the well, it is commanded by the, by the laws of the of golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that this higher code here be used to activate the D, the DNA within each person here. Activate the DNA template and the auric field, the morphogenetic field, creating the light into there. We, we also command by the laws of the golden liquid realms and our chemical powers that, <clears throat> that this higher code be activated in each person's four brain centers, the pineal gland, pituitary gland, hypothalamus, and medulla oblongata, 15 chakras, and DNA template, restoring the DNA to its original divine function and activating it to its highest energy holding potential in line with everyone's higher self now to Asia in today, activating the first three DNA strands. So we activate strands one, two, and three. It is commanded in the name of divine love that each person here be infused with new neural cords, new templates, and new soul programming from their higher self in the best way possible for them. Now, to Asia in today. Activating the ascension, ascension cycle and the frequencies, the vibrations into each person here and the love, the divine love and strengthening each person here. Helping each person to adjust with all the changes of this earth, going into this new, this new earth, a golden age. <coughs>
Okay, so now everyone just take a glass of water. Right after you've done that, just share your experience. Just share, just share, share what you experienced in that in that activation. <clears throat> Miko feeling lighter already, as light as a cloud. Yeah. Well, Sharon, to Asia and to Doi, it simply means so it is spoken, so it is done. And honestly, I, I, I can't really remember the spelling after that, but we check that. Sharon, fill, filling up and opening to my true messages, floating. Seamus, seeing lots of colors of light. Irina, pressure in my forehead and feeling lightheaded. Sheldon, I felt something in my throat and some pressure releasing in my head. <laughs> yeah, sometimes these activations even act as clearings too. Bye. Mark's feeling peace. Faye feels clearer and more centered. Simone, holy moly, activated my glass of water two minutes before you spoke about water. So many downloads have no words. Awesome. Linda saw brain waves moving. Minu, light pulses and energy. Cat, my hands started buzzing and still are. Christine, I think I went really deep, felt really sleepy, felt some movement in my cells. Yeah, yeah, that did go really deep. Simone, my body arched, feeling ama freeing, amazing, very grateful. Penny, it was as though the waters were open, this beam of energy entered and the water closed into it and every molecule merged with it. That's great, Penny. Robin, peacefulness, strengthening of resolve and determination of higher purpose. Christine, during the activation of the brain center's mind got very hot, especially around the sides and had to release energy vocally. Tachi feels grounded, Victor feels stronger within. 
and he fills in in Levend. Kalan, I know that it must be doing something, but I'm not feeling anything. Well, yeah, that's okay. Sometimes it takes a bit of time. Donna Rose, maybe because I'm new to this, but I felt a bit nauseous. Yeah, it can be like that. It's when a lot is being cleared and activated. Seamus, it's so powerful and incredible, intriguing. Fiona, my hips don't hurt. I felt energy in the room. Barbara, calm and peaceful, saw some pulsing. Alex felt a shield of strengthening over my back and wrapping up around my pelvis. Donna definitely felt sleepy. Nadine, uplifting and so relaxed now. Well, actually, I've just realised the time now, everyone. So, so I'll have to, so I'll now so I'll now just wrap it up here and thank you all for listening and for experiencing that activation. And I now ha I'll now hand back over to Grace and Steve. Thanks, Will. That was um, that was really really powerful. Um, I always I love the way those codes dance. Right when they get activated, they move around. It um, it really really helps um, shift things. So well done. Thank you. That was that was really really good. Um, all right. Well, Grace, that just about brings us to a close. We have gone uh, the trip to the pub for the couple of points of schooners for the boys here. <laughs> halfway through it's a little bit of a sidetrack for us um but um that does just about bring us to a close um look uh thank you everyone for all your attendance um i, I guess I i'd be really interested grace i don't know if you I'm, I'm assuming you would be as well um in terms of distance traveled um you know, we, we, the whole purpose of this was to give back, one, to give back to you, and two, to respond to the fear going around now. So can I just have a yes in the um, in the chat if you have felt some distance travel? In other words, you feel less fearful or you feel you've got more tools to cope or you've got some other things to help you to look within to gain more centre to help you forward. So if it's been a um, a useful um, couple of hours for you, then I'd, I'd really love to to hear that. I'm getting lots of yeses in there. Yes, for sure. Double yes. Absolutely yes. Yep. Thank you, everyone. Okay, fantastic. Um, I'd probably ask for some specific feedback, but I am just um, mindful of time. Grace, what would you like to do um, to, to finish up? Thanks, everyone, for that. Um, um, in terms of, um, of your, your feedback and your distance travel, well done. Fantastic. Thank you. No, I can't hear you, Grace. You're muted, I think. How's that? That's better. Yeah, now, now okay. you're good. Yeah. Um, firstly, I just, uh, because there's so much information um, being sent out today and delivered, allow it just to integrate and yeah. um, allow it to settle in your body, settle, settle in your mind, your heart. Just allow it to integrate every word, all the logos that we've shared today. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Okay, so just a, a couple of um, housekeeping things. And one of the other bigger benefits, or bigger callings with events was this event rather was to um, to honour the life of Sammy Warren's partner. Um, and one of the things that we said we would do is, is we would provide you with a link to. Um, give you a chance to donate to one of Sammy's favourite charities. She was very much a, a person who loved the earth, loved nature and so forth, um, in that we've, we've located a charity that will honour that part of her and that legacy. So our, our, what we said at the very start is what you think this was worth, this was worth to you, this event, we'd love you to donate in kind to that charity that was Sammy's in honour of her and her life and her contribution to the world. Uh, Warren, have you got a link to put into um, the chat there for her charity? You bet. Yeah, I'm just putting it in now. Yep, got it. So what it is, is that Sammy always had a real passion for elephants who were distressed and sick and who came out of captivity and they'd been chained and all that. It used to really upset her. So her main charity is anything to do with, with, with animals and rest, restoring forests or greenery so i found a really good little one an elephant hospital which i thought that's the one thing i know she would absolutely love so if you go into that page it explains what it does i mean at the top is a button that says donate now 
You can use an Amex, you can use a credit card, or you can use a PayPal. We're not affiliated in any way with that charity in terms of it's not anything we run. But, yeah, I like what they're about when I had a look at them. So, yeah, they're helping places like that. So, um, yeah, I was very happy about that. I it definitely looked in alignment with what we're seeking and what we're looking to do. And, um, and yeah, and I know Sammy would be very, very happy with that one to help elephants and make a difference for, you know, these beautiful creatures. So mm -hmm. the other thing mm -hmm. I'll quickly mention, Steve, is okay with you, because I mentioned what's happening on the 21st of December. Yes, and hand yes. Back yeah, yep. on the 21st of December, 2021, um, it's a really, really, really powerful day. The 21, the 12, 21, it's a mm. three, three, three activation sequence. The 21, the 12, so you couldn't get a more powerful thing. So what we're doing is a Von Delphor has just literally been downloaded 13 amazing codes, which, he, mm. which has never happened to her before. And when I went through them with her yesterday, I walked out of there so activated. I'm still recovering from it. You know, absolutely amazing. So what she was getting is it is the same as me. Like what I was given about a month ago was on that day we're starting a ten year of door. Because what happened to William explain every twenty six odd thousand years there's an ascension portal which opens and a large lot of people start ascending and leaving or completing their their path here, and then the next twenty six thousand years it starts again and only in dribs and drabs you know people who go through the, the different cycles. So. Yeah, we're very blessed to be in this time of history. We've chosen to be here. Um, it's going to be a changeover in society where the Atlantean kind of collapse and things like that. We're going to see certain things, kind of people. It, it's kind of a big test or experiment where people have a choice. Do you want to be part of an ascension and the next evolution or do you want to hold on to what you've got? And if you want to hold on to what you've got, it's going to be a massive retrograde step going into the 3D and that kind of stuff. So we're going to be doing it exactly 6 o'clock Perth time which is nine o'clock Sydney time at night. And we chose that time deliberately because the six and the nine are in sequence with the, the three, 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 because three plus three is six, three plus three plus three is nine. So we're doing it six o'clock Perth time, which will be 6 a.m. New York time in America. Um, so which kind of works really well with the three main main parts. So we'll be sending a link up. We'll be putting on the City Awakening group, sending it out to Awakening within. So stay tuned for the link. But yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this um, ascension. What we'll be doing, it'll be free. Again, we'll be asking for a donation. This one will be used for the awakening work. So all we're doing is offering people a chance for donation. If you really don't have money, there's no problem, you know, but we always encourage people to give back, you know. So what we'll be doing is that, and, you know, just to, so we'll be given an opportunity just to donate and that money will be used for the awakening work. So yes, Queensland is 8 p.m. So eight's still a good number, Donna, don't worry, don't miss out. So, yep. Um, well, Donna, you, it also means that. we're just on normal time as well, right? So, <laughs> yeah, it just means Queensland has evolved, and, and that's all it means. Nothing yeah, major. Yeah. Means you'll miss out on the ascension. That's all that happens. Oh bugger! <laughs> maybe next time. Maybe next ten thousand years. Yeah, yeah. So Twenty six thousand years, you'll get another yeah. chance. Don't worry about yeah. it. And how long will it go, Warren? I'd say somewhere between forty five minutes to an hour. Won't be, it'll be a longer one because. There's a lot of codes to do. So that, I'd say between 45 minutes to an hour. Yeah, yeah. and Warren, we have had a, a, a question or two. Can we put the link in, link to the Samish charity and a link to my book to get that in the Telegram group? And we had that question a little bit earlier. Can we do both of those as well? So okay. what do you want? Yeah, that's so, fine. So I can put the link yeah. for the charity in the Telegram group. So I'll do that now before I forget. Yeah. And then you can put your book in separately. Okay. Yeah, cool. All right. Um, and speaking of um, things coming up, just a reminder to everyone, everyone too, the, both the Awakening Within and Global World Club has really big plans for 2022. There's a big GWC or Global World Club event in February, and then the Truth About Everything, the really big, the Awakening Within in event in March. So there's a couple of really big things to look forward to next year, a lot coming up next year. And next year is a really, really big year. Um, there are going to be a lot more changes, as we know. Um, so yes, stay tuned. You'll get um, information about all, all of that in due course. And just remember to um, replay this week will probably be out around about Thursday. Um, and Warren will put the, the link in for the charity in um, the Telegram group. So uh, I think that just about covers everything. Grace, is there anything else that um, you can think of? 
Oh, that covers everything, Steve, to be honest. It's been a long, long morning. So mm. really appreciate your attention and um, being present with us and um, sharing this time. And, yeah, and just wish everyone a safe and um, Christmas with everyone that you're sharing with or whoever you're with and yeah. um, just bring meaning to it. Yeah, definitely. There's two quick other questions. Um, the recording will be emailed to everyone during the week around about Thursday and the Telegram group. Warren, have you got a link to the Telegram group you could put in the chat for people before we close? If you want to join the Telegram group. Oh, shit. Let me see if I can get one. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me how to do it. I wouldn't know how to do it. <laughs> and that, that's, that's an official term too. Oh, shit. All right. So, um... <laughs> Uh, well, while, while Warren's doing that, if he can, um, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm, I really, really do appreciate the the input that everyone had, and as we've said a number of times, the energy of the group today was fantastic. And I, I really think it's such an appropriate way to finish the year, even though there's a few days left, obviously before Christmas. But in terms of the the training and so forth, um, a really great note to finish on for the year. The link to the Telegram group, if you want to join that, is in the chat now. So you'll have to click that really, really soon because it will go away as soon as we um, we click off and say goodbye. So, Grace, any last words? Definitely the last time. Last time. Okay. Yeah. Well, everything is an illusion except for love. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Have a really good Christmas. Enjoy your break. My, Enjoy last, going words is, my last words is get jabbed, get anal swab, stay safe. <laughs> oh, Dr. Bill, where have you been? We haven't heard from you today. Dr. Bill, great to hear from you. Uh, well, rule number six, right? There he is, Dr. Bill. He made an appearance exactly. finally. Yeah. Um, All right, thanks, well, my, everyone. Well my, last, well, my last words is, I mean, I want to hear Steve and Grace do a sing and dance to it. Well, maybe that, that will be in 26,000 years' time, Will, so That's you're right. around for exactly. that, mate. Stick around. All right, namaste, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. See you, everyone. Bye.